Welcome to a basic introduction to mechanical ventilation. This is chapter 2.7, the ventilator cycle. Just like normal human beings, the ventilator has a cycle that it goes through as it's inspiring and expiring. There are a number of different concepts within the ventilator cycle that you need to understand and that we're going to cover today. When a ventilator starts to take a breath, the first phase of the ventilator cycle is the start of inspiration. This occurs when the ventilator is triggered, which is one of the concepts to understand, and is the signal to the ventilator to deliver the breath. One of two things can trigger the ventilator. Either the patient can request a breath or a certain amount of time can elapse. The patient can trigger by starting to take a breath. The ventilator senses this and notices a drop in the pressure in the ventilator tubing or that there's an increase in flow through the ventilator circuit. This is the clue to the ventilator to initiate the next breath. The ventilator can also automatically deliver a breath if the patient doesn't trigger or is unable to trigger because of the effects of medications like neuromuscular blockade or sedation. The trigger in this case then is time. The ventilator measures the amount of time it has been since the last breath and if it is beyond the limit will initiate the next breath. So for example if the frequency set on the ventilator is 15 breaths per minute then the ventilator will be automatically triggered to deliver a breath if four seconds goes by. The next phase of the ventilator cycle is the target. The target is simply the set pressure or volume that you determined to be the control mode for the ventilator. If you set the ventilator to a certain number of milliliters of volume, then the target is when the ventilator reaches that total volume to be delivered. Again, I want to remind you that there is a strict relationship between the compliance, the volume, and the pressure in the lungs, and that you have to watch that when you select one variable, such as the pressure, to be the target, then the other variable, volume, is something you have to keep an eye on. Suppose you have lungs with very low compliance or are stiff, when you try to reach the pressure target that you've set, the target may be quickly reached and much less volume is delivered as a result. Conversely, when you set a volume as your target, the pressure may exceed the safe limits of the ventilator and cause harm to the patient before the entire tidal volume is delivered. Also note that flow can be a target in ventilation but for the purposes of these series, I'm not going to discuss that and try and keep it as simple as possible for you. The final phase of the ventilator cycle is cycling. Cycling marks the end of inspiration and the start of exhalation. It can occur after a set period of time, such as the inspiratory time, or after a set volume has been delivered, or after a point where the set flow rate drops below a certain level. When pressure was the controlled variable and the target, the cycling occurs after a set period of time, regardless of the amount of volume of air delivered. When volume is the controlled variable and the target, then cycling occurs when the set volume has been delivered. If the patient is on a pressure support ventilation, which we'll discuss more about in a future talk, the ventilator will cycle once the flow rate is below 25% of the initial flow as it is a marker to the ventilator when the patient has spontaneously stopped inhaling and wishes to start exhalation. Exhalation itself is passive and is not a controlled variable. One thing to watch when you're ventilating a patient is to observe the flow pattern on the exhalation limb to ensure that a complete exhalation has occurred prior to the initiation of next breath. If there is still flow present during exhalation just as the next breath is delivered, then this means that gas trapping is occurring.